In my last video, I visited Scar's Motorcycles Workshop in Peckham, and Jack, the owner, showed us the Honda CB650 that he exhibited at the Bike Shed show last year. Not only will that bike appear at this year's show again, but Jack's also been working on a new build, a CG125 that he's going to talk us through today. This is a Honda CG125 from 1995. So obviously it looks a bit old, uh, looks a bit older than it um, does from when it came out of the factory. But uh, I'll just run through the bike from front to back, I think, and tell you exactly uh, what's been going on. So we'll start with the tires. These are just uh, Continental TKC 80s. Bit tricky to get the right size on this, um, especially with the rear to do the, the swing arm clearance, but um, bit of trial and error, get the right size, but nothing too chunky, but enough to make it give it that scrambler stance I was going for. These aluminium mud guards, they came from uh, a guy who just rolled them for me, and then I just finished them off with a brushed um, effect, and then just cutting it in into the forks. And then if we go to the headlight, it's just a very simple one um, from, I can't remember where I got it from now, but very simple with LED indicators rental handlebars, slight rise and just to get, get a bit higher stance for the scrambler effect. And then we've got just some brown gum handle grips with some old school looking um, switch gears off a Honda CG, but I'm not too sure which year, but they're a good eBay find. And then a simple speedo with just a light, nothing else really. And then all your information you just get from your switch gears. The tank um, was sprayed by a paint monkey. You can check them out on Instagram. Did a really nice job and this colour is actually off a of Ford um, and just with a little black black detailing so that's kind of really nice how that just lines up with the seat, flows down and then this seat just covered in leather but that detail sort of lines up with the uh, with the frame there. Powder coated frame, it's got a slightly sort of metallic look to it and the engine's done the same as well with, um, that's pretty standard apart from the Ram air filter. Um, and tweaking of the carbs so that it can uh, fuel the extra air going in. The exhaust is just a universal fit. Sounds quite throaty, just a little single thumper. And then what else we got? Again, we've just got another little aluminium tail tidy with, which incorporates the rear light and indicators. Again, they're just LED flashes. Um, Rechromed wheels, uh, standard suspension, and just, um, yeah, good polish as well. Uh, what made you choose to do the 125 because you did a 650 first so it's like a smaller capacity bike yeah what was the reason you chose the CG uh, the CG was just to sort of um, mainly because it appeals to a wider market a lot more people have you know licenses they can just jump on a 125 from a from a from a standard driving license and especially in sort of places in London or other cities it's just a just a nice little quick get around and yeah after working on the CB650 I just fancied something a bit simpler <laughs> but in actual fact the same amount of work goes into this as the other custom it's just a smaller engine that's the only fit real thing and uh, you can pick it up with your hands instead of using cranes because you were saying there was a few things that were a bit like the carbs would be the thing that was easier or yeah yeah the carburetor is easier just to tune up because it's just a couple of screws i didn't rejet it um there's only one of them so you don't have to sink them all mm. obviously you've got four carbs then you've got to sink them all um and generally it's just easier to, and it's kickstart as well, not electric, so you're not worrying too much about where the faults are, it's just turn it over very simply. And yeah, it's just something I could, just an accessible bike really. You said it was a bit simpler than doing that bike, um, a lot of work still, but anything particularly difficult or unexpected that came up on it or? Uh, good question. Not really? Not just really, no, because there is a photo on Instagram of like what this looked like beforehand, and it had this sort of just a horrible 90s sort of plastic wobbly sort of design at the time and i suppose getting the fuel tank fitting right because obviously underneath it's essentially the same bike as it was made in the 70s mm. but the, the the way the the fuel tanks mounted is different so i had to like cut away the old mountain uh, drill a hole through the frame and then put a new mounting and just making sure it's all lined up um correctly so that the lines are flowing because it's quite easy to spot when someone just puts plonks a tank on the bike and expect it to look like yeah. a, a cool bike. It takes a bit of time to get those all those lines flowing. Um, yeah, stuff like CXs have that kind of slightly upward tilt, and a lot of people kind of flatten yeah. those out and 
really changes the like the stance of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of people they will then try and compensate it in other areas, like pull it pushing the, the forks through through the, the um, triple tree here to mm. lower the front. But it kind of messes up the handling of the bike, so it's nice to keep it as simp as standard as possible. Yeah. Without sort of fiddling around too much, if you're not going to go around the realms of, you know, putting you know forks off the upside down forks on it or whatever you want to do. Um, so it's still pretty much stock apart from tank and obviously the accessories that go go on it, like the suspension's the same, the swing arms the same. Obviously the tires will change the handling, but um, you know, sort of look I was going for really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was the did you say the tank was? From the original, or is it a different year? It's, uh, I don't know what year it's, I got it second hand, so it's a bit impossible to say what, what year it came from. Mm. But it's the same tank as they put on, I suppose, the early early 80s, even the late 70s ones. And yeah, then was there but, any other bits you swapped out? I think you said the switch gear were off. Yeah, so the, I, found the, I found these on eBay, but I'm not too sure what bike they actually came off of. It was obviously an older one. But um, yeah, I could do some research actually to find them because these actually look pretty good in it. There's no wing mirrors on it, so option extra. <laughs> <laughs> look over the shoulder. Uh, and the little Speedo um, is just from a company in Germany. Um, but it's super simple. Um, that's what I kind of wanted to go for because you could have like the lights there and you know, yeah. you're turning left, turning right, full beams on. But you can see all that just by looking at your controls, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it's tricky because. <laughs> A lot of the time, in these speedo cable ca cables, they're so rigid in the way that they turn. Obviously, don't if they don't have enough curve on them, then they don't spin properly to, from from the wheel to give you an accurate reading. So, routing that so it's not interfering with too much. I mean, here it is slightly rubbing on the headlights, so I might have to just put a little cushion on that to stop it from wearing through the paint. Mm. But um, there's not much movement in that when the bike's turning, so um, that's a bit tricky. Obviously, wiring is difficult. That's probably the, one of the hardest bits, actually, because mm. you've got all this gump and crap from before where they've had lights and stuff around here, and you've got to somehow tidy that all away. And you know, you want to keep all this clean and nice so it doesn't sort of interrupt the negative space, because that's as well as what I'd call as the positive space of the tank and the seat and the bars and the wheels and stuff. But with the bikes, it's almost about the negative space as well. So what's left here and here? Yeah, I mean. Um, with these bikes, obviously being a small engine, they are, they do look a bit weedy down here when you start filling up stuff. That's why I've kind of tried to keep it as stock as possible, apart from the handlebars and stuff. Mm. Because if you start like, I don't know, I'm not a fan of putting like clip-ons, and I'm probably gonna disgruntle people here, but with putting clip-ons and stuff, it's trying to be something it's not. Right. So it's, n it's not a powerful bike. So, you know, why am I gonna make it look like a mm. 650 or a, you know, 800cc motorbike? Because you said um, actually the guy you bought it off used it for tearing around the fields and that kind of yeah thing. it was the right state when i bought it it was just covered in mud mm. um and bits falling off of it so yeah if you check out the before shot on my instagram you'd probably be quite surprised what it, what it looked like but that's part of it it's part of the fun sort of restoring something that was completely dilapidated and ready for the scrap heap really and then bringing it back to life and and giving it a new new lease of life as it were so plans for it are it'll be at the bike shed show in a couple of weeks yeah then after that after that it's going to go to the mal mile or mali mile how you want to pronounce it um and yeah just going to tear around on it really the only annoying thing is that with the new emissions in london it's a bit tricky even though it's such a small bike you can't actually drive it in central london anymore um but yeah just have some fun on it i think sweet yeah anything else uh i don't think so no it's about it and this is my workshop <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again to Jack for taking the time to make these videos with me. You can see more images of his builds and videos of the bike starting up over on his Instagram, which I've linked to in the description below. Let me know what you think of the bikes down in the comments. Personally, I think this CG125 is really tastefully done and I think it'll make a great little urban runaround. And of course, if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe and I'll catch you next time.